السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أهلا بكم إلى هذه الحلقة من برنامج من الداخل عبر الميادين معكم زينب صفار لعل القانون الدولي واضح وضوح الشمس عملية الضم لأجزاء من الضفة الغربية والأغوار غير قانونية ويوضح استمرار تعنت إسرائيل في اتباع هذه السياسة مزيدا من التجاهل الساخر للقانون الدولي مثل هذه السياسات لا تغير الوضع القانوني للأراضي وسكانها بموجب القانون الدولي على أنها محتوى ولا ترفع مسؤوليات إسرائيل كقوة احتلال بل تشير إلى قانون الغاب الذي يجب أن لا يكون له مكان في عالمنا اليوم وحري بأعضاء المجتمع الدولي تطبيق القانون وإعادة تأكيد أن الضم أي جزء من الضفة الغربية المحتلة لاغ وباطل وعليهم أيضا أن يعملوا على الوقف الفوري لبناء أو توسيع المستوطنات الإسرائيلية غير القانونية والبنية التحتية ذات الصلة في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة ويرى المراقبون أن كل خطوة نحو الضم حتى لو كانت رمزية ستؤثر في الوضع عبر الحدود وستشعل الشارع كما ستواجه تحركات القوات الإسرائيلية المحتلة مقاومة عنيفة وشرسة وقد صرح بني جانت زعيم حزب أزرق أبيض مؤخرا بأنه في ضوء انتشار فيروس كورونا والوضع الاقتصادي المتدهور لا يوجد أي مبرر للإصرار على المضي في الضم حيث تقف إسرائيل على حافة أسوأ أزمة اقتصادية في تاريخها مع ارتفاع نسب البطالة 20% في المئة. وتظهر استطلاعات الرأي الإسرائيلية فقدان الاهتمام العام بالمشروع أما نتنياهو فلم يعلن نياته ويفترض أنه ينتظر الضوء الأخضر من صهر ترامب كوشنر وتشير التقارير إلى أنه حتى البيت الأبيض بات موقفه فاترا في سياق الانشغال بوضع كوفيد-19 وانتخابات تشرين الثاني نوفمبر الداهمة وحتى المرشح الديمقراطي جو بايدن يعارض الضم أيضا ميك نيبير رئيس الحملة الاسكتلندية للتضامن مع فلسطين ينضم إلينا من غلاسكو في اسكتلندا لنتحدث عن مقاربتهم في هذا السياق وعن الأنشطة التي يرعونها ونشرح موقف المملكة المتحدة من عملية الضم الإسرائيلية Mick Napier, Chair of the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign, joining us from the city of Glasgow in Scotland. Welcome to Minadakhil from the inside, Mick. Thank you very much for having me, Zainab. It's always pure pleasure to have you. Well, uh, the US gave the green light to Israel on annexation. The reports suggest that even the White House currently has turned lukewarm in the context of preoccupation with the coronavirus situation, the elections and the deteriorating economy. Why do you believe, Mick, the UK government offered their acceptance despite many voices inside the UK opposing such a step, like the churches, for example, uh, in the UK have called on Westminster to do everything in its power to deter annexation of the West Bank? And last May, in an unprecedented move, around 130 British members of Parliament, they signed a petition, a letter calling for Prime Minister Johnson to impose sanctions on Israel should it proceed with annexation. The British government's behaving in character. On the one hand, Boris Johnson wagged his finger sternly at Netanyahu, and, and told him not to annex another great chunk of the West Bank. On the other side of his mouth, he continues to sell sniper rifle parts to the Israeli army while they kill Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And he's let it be known that whatever Netanyahu does, he will oppose sanctions. It's not just the British government. The German foreign minister went to Tel Aviv a few weeks ago and did pretty much the same thing told them not to annex uh, parts of the West Bank, but assured Netanyahu that Germany would oppose any sanctions against Israel if it were to proceed. So this is a dance which is very familiar to the Israelis. They know that public opinion in European countries is very strongly opposed to what Israel is doing. 
and their allies in European governments have to balance very delicately between public opinion and the and the wish to keep an alliance with the with the state of Israel. So I think it's very much a continuation of of the old policy. But what's new mm -hmm. is that increasingly sections of the political elite in Britain, Germany, and France and elsewhere are very worried that if Netanyahu is to make official uh, the Israeli um, what can I say, Israeli military and civil domination of the Palestinians, then it takes away the alibi from British and other governments who have constantly said to their people, we don't want to take sanctions against Israel. We are looking forward to a two-state solution sometime in the nebulous future. And it's an alibi that enables them to, to not do anything in the here and now confronted with Israeli crimes mm -hmm. and a population that doesn't like that. But, you know, Mick, uh, the annexation, if it takes place, is synonymous of no state for uh, the Palestinians at all. And uh, it seems that the Brexit has pushed Britain further towards Israel. What's your take? I don't think it's further. Britain was, Britain was the midwife for the, for the beast for generating the colonization of Palestine by European Zionist Jews. Mm -hmm. and, to, and to this day, goes along with the Israeli policy of seizing as much of Palestine as possible and expelling as many Palestinian people as possible. Mm -hmm. so, the, so Britain has been very, very consistent. What's new is the idea that this, uh, can I say, veil, this, this face-saving device of talking about a two-state solution in the future, once Netanyahu destroys it, mm -hmm. then it becomes more difficult for Britain to continue with the status quo. And that's why many of these parliamentarians, some of whom are staunchly pro-Israel, mm -hmm. uh, together with people in America and elsewhere who are pro-Israel, are warning that Israel is making it impossible for them to defend mm -hmm. apartheid. Uh, racial domination of the Palestinian people via settler colonial project. Mm -hmm. So it's Netanyahu who is removing the mask, mm -hmm. just as he removed the mask by declaring the so-called nation state law, mm -hmm. which said that across the whole of Palestine, Jews only have, have national rights and the democratic rights of all non-Jews mm -hmm. were officially barred. Uh, so it was a very important step. And it seems that Netanyahu wants to continue along that same path. But his friends are saying to him, beware of what you wish for, because this, is, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Why not continue day after day to dispossess Palestinians, demolish homes, kill, right. uh, you know, poison farmland mm -hmm. and so on? In a similar vein, how does this Israeli annexation plan breach international laws, exacerbate decades of systematic human rights violations against Palestinians there, and enshrine the entrenched impunity that has fueled decades of war crimes, crimes against humanity and other grave violations, and also undermine the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, including the right of return of Palestinian refugees? You know, Zainab, faced with the horror of World War II and the Nazis' extermination of Russians and Jews and Serbs and so on, uh, laws were passed in 1945 declaring that it was uh, illegal to conquer land, illegal to move uh, you know, domestic populations into the conquered territories and so on. That was never meant to apply to colonial peoples. That was for Europeans. It wasn't for people in Africa or Asia or the Middle East. And those those laws, those human rights laws, have never been applied to Middle Eastern peoples. They are beyond the pale of this protective law. And I think Israel is a bandit state. I want to avoid hyperbole. Israel violates every notion of international law that would protect civilians. Uh, collective punishment in Gaza and the West Bank, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, moving their own population into a conquered territory. Com you know, any way you look at it, Israel is immune. Israel refuses to follow the, the body of international law that was devised after the Second World War to protect civilian populations. And it's full spectrum. There's nothing subtle about it. Mm -hmm. The Western Chancellor is know about this. But they and they continue to publicly oppose it, but they continue to send weapons to make sure that the crimes are carried out at the same time.
Mm -hmm. They speak out of both sides of their mouths at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we talked about the stance of the UK vis-à-vis -vis this uh, plan of the Israelis' uh, annexation. Um, now, there is an undeniable lack of coherence when it comes to Europe. More than your, uh, 1,000 European MPs call for Israel annexation to be halted and they warn of consequences. Yet others note that the EU would succumb to US and Israeli pressure and its own divisions on the continent and uh, it's suffering from all that and it would be left powerless in opposing Israel's plans. I mean, the EU is very weak in terms of developing a coherent foreign mm -hmm. policy compared to, say, the USA, which is a unified state. But still, there's, I come back to the basic problem, which is by any measure of public opinion across the whole of Europe, Germany, France, Britain and so on, public opinion is a problem for our governments. I mean, you're probably too young to know, Zainab, but some years ago, the EU carried out an opinion poll of its members. And they found that majorities viewed Israel as a great threat to world peace. Franco Frattini, mm -hmm. the EU foreign affairs spokesman, apologized to Israel for the opinions of European citizens and assured Israel that these opinions, this public opinion, would not influence EU foreign policy, i.e. Israel was safe and the, the sweetheart deals, the scientific integration, the arms sales, all of those could continue uh, defying uh, public opinion. But having said that, it's a dangerous game. Um, an Israeli ambassador who left Britain to go to the UN, Ron Prosser, went on record to say, look, our relations with the British government government fine with corporate britain we have great relations he compared bill he compared uh, britain to a high-rise building he said in the penthouse everything is fine but every other level of the building we have a serious problem with public opinion and you know it threatens to burst out from time to time zainab even judges right. in london mm -hmm. had a, an arrest warrant for sippy lipney and the police were actually waiting with handcuffs for sippy Livney. Sippy mm -hmm. Lipney, I get a horrible name wrong. When mm -hmm. she came Sipi into Lipney, London, yes, yes. Sippy Lipney, she came Sipi. into London, mm -hmm. and the police were waiting to arrest her. And there have been other Israeli war criminals who have faced the prospect of arrest so direct that the British government had to change the regulations, the administration of the law to to uh, to protect these people. So public opinion threatens to break through from time to time. Mm -hmm. And our governments are constantly, you know, like a swan gliding effortlessly over the surface of a water, but underneath they're paddling furiously to try to keep this public opinion in line. Right, it almost right. threatens to, to damage the relations between Israel and our governments. Right, uh, excellent. Uh, Mick, do stay with us. We're going to stop now for a short break and then afterwards we're going to talk a bit about Scotland and your actions in this regard. But after the break, Idan Fasil al Qasir Wanaud, let us Biden. أهلا بكم من جديد ميك نيبير chair of the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign welcome back sir well Mick, in many European countries with far right governments and parties clout including in France and Germany the BDS is illegal so the options for challenging the annexation plans are to a certain extent limited though activists should keep challenging these absurd uh, laws what about Scotland well, can I correct you, um, Zainab? There was recently a legal decision by the European Court uh, following a, a, a very hard campaign by French BDS activists, which was a, a finger in the eye of the Zionists because it said BDS is a, is a democratic right and it's protected. And whereas in France, uh, people had last year and the year before faced the prospect of arrest for wearing T-shirts, Mm -hmm. uh, calling for BDS. Today that threat's been lifted and we've got, uh, for example, in, in my own country, Scotland, we have a contradiction. Um, the, Brit the Scottish government commissioned a legal uh, study by a prestigious judge 
um, who took a very long time consulting experts, came back and said, Israel is not protected. Uh, free speech means that you can you can attack Israel or any, any political mm. entity any way you wish. That runs counter to the Scottish government, which has been going in the opposite direction and has been adopting legislation, not legislation, has been taking a political stand uh, uh, which basically criminalizes BDS. But, you know, on the ground, the BDS campaign continues to grow. Boycott and divestment. Yes. And for the very first time, Zainab, the word sanctions is in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, some note that unless a strong popular movement emerges and pushes for tougher action, there can be no obvious effective role for Europe in the near future vis a vis the Palestinian rights and cause. What actions as SPSC have you taken in this context, Mick? And who are the sides in Scotland that are standing firmly? with you in support of the Palestinian cause against those vicious Israeli plans? Let me give you the bad news then the good news. The bad news is that elements in the Labour Party and other mainstream political forces, including the SNP, have moved either to, uh, to attack pro-Palestine voices or to remain silent. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the bad news. The good news is that um, here in Scotland, for example, the main trade union federation, uh, important church bodies, areas of civil society are, are refusing to be intimidated um, and, and, are, and are taking a stand. So, so we have to educate people about Israeli crimes. We have to build up opposition to the annexation. And I have to say that formally, our government um, opposes that annexation. They just won't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, on the ground, it's BDS. Uh, we have secured some successes. We've got um, pension funds to divest from uh, Israeli bank Kapu Alim, which facilitates Israeli crimes. But we're pushing the argument that Palest Palestine is not a small country far away where terrible crimes are happening. It's a major domestic issue. Now, I can't say, Zainab, what, nobody could say when the Berlin Wall was going to fall or when the Soviet Union would collapse. We don't know when we're going to win, but what we know is that our opponents are strenuously trying to silence us. But that silence hasn't shifted public opinion. Israel continues to, to anger people and to make it increasingly difficult even for their mm. defenders to, to defend them. And we've seen, we've seen some major desertions from the enemy camp, which I think in a war is quite important, right. where people have given up and said, I can't defend Israel anymore. Exactly. But, uh, sorry, 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 our answer is BDS and to build the BDS campaign. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, every move now towards annexation, even if symbolic, Mick, will affect the situation across the territories and would ignite the street. Do you think that now we should wait for Israel to start the implementation of its annexation plan to take action or the world ought to thwart such expansionist, illegal, dangerous ambitions? I mean, not to be merely reactive, but rather to be proactive. Oh, I agree with you very much. We, we have to defend every Palestinian village, every square foot of Palestinian soil, and we have to oppose this annexation. Israel has already annexed East Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and, and still the weapons continue to flow from Europe, and still still the EU gives Israel sweetheart economic deals. Uh, and they've, they've, they claim they've annexed a part of Syria, the, the Golan Heights. So annexation is in the, is in the Zionist DNA. We must oppose and we must try to protect every square foot of Palestine. Having said that, there is already a single violent and racist state between the Mediterranean and the Jordan River. It's a, it's a, it's a genocidal state. It, it murders Palestinians, it dispossesses. By the way, in the last month, while Netanyahu is weighing up whether to make official uh, the Israeli seizure of the West Bank, there's been, there's been a, an increase in house demolitions. Hundreds of Palestinians have been made homeless. 50 or, in the last month, I think 50 homes have been destroyed and a couple of hundred Palestinians have been thrown onto the street. So Israel doesn't need official uh, recognition from the West in order to continue with the dispossession of Palestinians and their killing and their, and their poisoning and so on. But it's something that it seeks. But Yes, we, we have to be very proactive because right. Israel's proactive. It doesn't wait for it, it's, it, 
Israel's on the move and we have to oppose, we have to try and protect every square foot. Right, every square meter. Sure. Now, the UK Labour Party's shadow education secretary, Rebecca Long-Bailey, was recently sacked after sharing an article on social media saying, among other things, that Israel had trained, um, I'm quoting her, US police in the knee on neck choking method used on George Floyd, unquote. Labour leader Keir Starmer accused Long Bailey of posting an article containing an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Evidently, the winds of change have come to Labour after Jeremy Corbyn stepped down Mick, and the change does not portend well. You, sir, and the uh, SPSC have been harshly criticised in a similar vein. Your take on the consequences of daring to blame Israel in the UK today? People are now being attacked and expelled from the Labour Party. Many of them are Jewish and many of them are black for telling the truth about what's going on in Israel-Palestine. Israeli police and soldiers train US soldiers. They train them in brutality. They train them with methods that have been tested on the captive uh, Palestinian population. And this is a, a simple, straightforward fact. And you're right, Keir Starmer has shown uh, the establishment in Britain, the elite, that he's quite prepared to attack his own left wing, uh, his own dissidents, people who might be tempted to support Palestine. And he, by, so, by doing this, he wants to prove to powerful powerful forces in Britain that they should support him and they should finance him. But you know, when you are attacked for telling something which everybody knows is true, that's not a weak position to be in. Mm -hmm. And you know, over the years, I have been and our members have been on trial for actually saying the words, end the siege of Gaza, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for condemning the blood of Palestinians being spilled spilled by Israel, we have been put on trial for uh, some ab absurd um, accusation of anti-Semitism by even talking about blood as if Palestinians don't have any. So it's reaching ridiculous levels. And you know, as the Greeks, ancient Greeks would say, whom the gods would destroy, they first drive mad. And it seems the Israel, the pro-Israel um, element here in Britain is trying to silence so many voices that ultimately, I tell you, Zane, I'm, I'm surer of this than, than than anything. Ultimately, this is this is this is they're going to break their teeth on the rocks of people who defy them. Because when you defy them, you mm -hmm. win. Right. And 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 it's, it's the people who 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 apologise for crimes they never committed. That's also a part of the problem inside the Labour Party. Right, right. From the city of Glasgow in Scotland, Mick Napier, chair of the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Thank you very much, Mick, for your valuable insights, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you for the invitation, Zainab. Keep oh. up the great work. Thank you. Always welcome, sir. وشكرا لكم مشاهدينا الكرام على طيب المتابعة للتفاعل أكثر تابعونا على صفحات السوشيال ميديا من كل فريق عمل برنامج من كل الميادين. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله.